Today, we're taking you back to the wizarding world of Harry Potter and talking about deleted scenes and some problems fans have with the series. Let's start with this one. Deleted scene that's got fans wondering why it was deleted. How will we know what it is when we get in there? All cracks can be anything. I'll... I'll know. How? I don't know how to explain it. Like I said, even though the book and film series have both gained a die-hard fan following, there are a few problems that some eagle-eyed viewers have picked up on in their 100th rewatch. The one I'm talking about today is from the very last movie, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. The sky has lost a star. My father used to say that when a child died. Funny how Mr. Dobby knew exactly where to find us. And it's quite a biggie. Luckily though, the problem has been solved by a scene that ended up deleted from the final cut of the film. We'll talk about the scene in just a bit, but the problem that stands is that the scene was removed from the final cut, so it isn't officially part of the story viewers get to see. And that's what opens up a pretty major plot hole. It all starts with Professor McGonagall doing something very uncharacteristic. What did Travers want? Absolutely outrageous behavior. Marching into a school like that. I was all very mundane. I'm fine. Sorry, Minerva. A lot of marking. The plot hole in question takes place during the climactic finale of the first movie. The crucial detail that sets it up is when Professor McGonagall sends all the Slytherin students off to the dungeons so they can't turn on the rest of the students, and most importantly, on Harry. This was actually a pretty jarring moment for some fans who thought that it was rather cruel of McGonagall, an otherwise super compassionate individual, to confine the Slytherin kids to the dungeons. This was also a big deviation from the book, one of many, where the Slytherin students and all other witches and wizards younger than 16 are removed from the castle. A lot more reasonable than what happened in the movies, don't you think? Before McGonagall sends the Slytherins off to the dungeons, one of the students from the same house suggests turning Harry over to Lord Voldemort. What are you waiting for? Someone grab him! Now, if any of you don't think that's a big deal, let me elaborate. This scene sets the plot hole later on, when Draco Malfoy shows up to duel Harry, Ron, and Hermione, with his sidekicks Goyle and Blaze. Keep in mind, all this is from the movie, not the book. The weird part of the fight scene is that audiences were already shown Goyle and Blaze as two of the students who were sent off to the dungeons. But just a few minutes later, we see them with Malfoy in the Room of Requirement. We don't get an explanation of their sudden appearance in the final cut of the movie. Maybe they escaped? That's where the deleted scene comes in. What do you mean? Unless we can destroy it. So, we were thinking... Well, Ron was thinking it was Ron's idea. It's completely brilliant. You destroyed Tom Riddle's diary with a basilisk fang, right? Well, me and Hermione think we know where we might find one. Okay? The scene shows us Malfoy breaking the Slytherin students out of dungeons after he returns to Hogwarts. That's exactly when you can see him grab his friends so they can catch up with Harry and his friends. Now, you may not know this, but this scene was actually supposed to go completely differently. What was supposed to happen was that Malfoy was supposed to be accompanied by longtime cronies Vincent Crabb and Gregory Goyle. But the actor who played Crabb, Jamie Waylett, had been caught growing cannabis at home and wasn't exactly available for the shooting. So the character was replaced by Blaze Zabini, and unfortunately for poor old Goyle, Crab's death in the books was given to him instead. Even more unfortunately for us, the scene I just talked about was entirely cut out of the film. It would have been great if they decided to just keep it in because it would have explained things a little better. More importantly though, it would have given us more Tom Felton. Can you believe he was on screen for just 31 minutes throughout the eight films? Anyway, that's not all attentive fans have identified with the story. They've also spotted a glaring issue with Slytherin's representation as a whole. Now we know that Slytherin is one of the four houses at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, with the other three being Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. We also know that students are placed into one of these houses during their induction by the Magical Sorting Hat. Even though the students have seemingly no control over the hat's decision, in the very last movie we learn that it actually does take inductees' wishes into consideration. A thread on the Harry Potter subreddit asks fans for their controversial opinions on the franchise, which amassed a number of responses from fans who were keen to voice their dissatisfaction with certain parts of the story. Story. Understandable, isn't it? Many users noted that despite the fandom's attempts to portray all Slytherins as nuanced and ambitious, Harry Potter media has never really tried to do the same. In fact, the films and books alike have problematically envisioned them as pretty two-dimensional characters with primarily villainous traits. That's not entirely false. The Slytherins are generally just the Hitler youth as per the franchise. 
Come on in. Yes? There's something I need to tell you. I don't want you to say anything that you wouldn't say if you weren't about to be killed by a giant snake. Or that's how one Reddit user phrased it anyway. The entire franchise has historically painted the house as being home to evil, villainous witches and wizards, with most Death Eaters and Voldemort himself having been members of the house during their time as students at Hogwarts. The words most commonly used to describe members of the house include cunning, proud, and selfish, all key characteristics of the bad guys in the story. With so many antagonistic forces being former members of Slytherin, it can get hard to separate members of the house from the negative connotations they've amassed. Look at the Black family, for instance. They're notorious for their involvement with dark magic and the Death Eaters, and they were all sorted into Slytherin. All of them, except for the one good guy, Sirius Black, who was sorted into Gryffindor. It shouldn't be made this obvious. Do you see it now? Don't be a fool. He can't help it, it's happened by Sirius, now. be quiet! Don't like yourself, Remus! Uh, Why don't you run along and play with your chemistry set? Sorry about the bite. I reckon that twinges a bit. The clear divide between the other houses on one side and Slytherin on the other? It's unfair and almost childish. Maybe the damage isn't irreversible, but Deathly Hollows Part 2 may have given the house a saving grace, in the form of none other than the Half-Blood Prince, Severus Snape. The last movie revealed that Snape was a double agent for the Order of the Phoenix all along, which ultimately meant that he was perhaps the most heroic character in the whole franchise. Grit our teeth and do it. Tonight when we get back to the common room, we'll both have partners. Agreed? Agreed. Oh! Oh! And guess which house he hailed from? Yup, Slytherin. At the very end of the last movie, we even seen a grown-up Harry reassuring his son, Albus Severus Potter, who appears to be nervous about being sorted into Slytherin. Harry tells him that Slytherin would gain a brilliant new wizard if he were to be sorted there. He even tells him that one of the bravest people he knew, referring to Snape, was a Slytherin. So maybe there's some good ones to come out of the house. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child actually confirms this to be the case. Like a bolt of lightning, it sparked something inside us all. It was a journey into the imagination, to a world filled with magic. Huh. But then the franchise continues to perpetuate negative stereotypes against Slytherin in Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Voldemort and the Death Eaters' close ties to Slytherin, as well as the rivalry between Harry and Draco, already made it difficult to fix the franchise's representation issue. So is there anything they can do to fix it? Well, maybe they could try and reduce the number of antagonists hailing from Slytherin, while increasing the number of heroic characters and also highlighting their positive traits. After all, we know they can't all be bad. So what do you think about the whole representation issue with Slytherins in the franchise. Let us know. Until then, catch you in the next one.